Yes. I ask consent for the proceedings on the quorum call be dispensed with. Without objection. Yesterday, President Biden took one step toward the debt limit solution we've been laying out for him literally for, for months. After meeting with Speaker McCarthy, the President finally, finally designated specific members of his staff to negotiate with the Speaker's office directly. I'm glad the President has taken the advice I gave him back in February that this would ultimately end in a negotiation between the President and the Speaker. It's encouraging that the White House is now engaging seriously with the only counterpart that can help deliver an actual solution. But because it took the President three months to start dealing in reality, we now have a time problem. So I'm hopeful the President's team will join House Republicans to produce a responsible spending agreement to raise the debt ceiling. And I'll continue to support Speaker McCarthy 100 percent. Now, on another matter, yesterday, at my urging, Biden administration officials held a briefing for our colleagues on the growing challenge Iran poses to America's allies, our interests, and our own personnel. The list of threats from Tehran is long and growing. The IRGC continues to harass commercial vessels in the Arabian Gulf. They arm and equip the Houthi rebels in Yemen who terrorize America's Gulf partners. They back the terrorist proxies in Iraq and Syria who killed an American and wounded two dozen others in March. They fund, train, equip, and facilitate Hezbollah, Hamas, and Palestinian Islamic Jihad's proxy war against Israel. All the while, Iran has developed closer ties with China, expanded its nuclear and missile programs, suppressed peaceful nationwide protests, and continued its efforts to assassinate current and former U.S. officials, as well as Iranian-American dissidents here on American soil. The administration recognizes Iran as, quote, Russia's top military backer, end quote, and describes Iran's two-way arms trade with Russia as a full-scale defense partnership. Tehran is not deterred from terror at home and abroad, looking at this administration's record of retreat. It's little wonder why. President Biden began his term by relaxing pressure on Tehran's proxies in Yemen and turning his back on America's partners in the Gulf. His administration spent two years fruitlessly chasing the Iranians around the negotiating table, and they signaled weakness and incompetence to their reckless and disastrous withdrawal from Afghanistan. And while Iran and its proxies have conducted more than 80, 80 attacks against U.S. forces in Iraq and Syria since the President took office, America has responded with force four times. Four times. If Iran does not fear serious consequences for such aggression, we cannot be surprised when they attack again and again all across the region. Unfortunately, the Middle East is not the only place where the Biden administration has met serious threats 
with a timid and halting response. Just look at the President's Ukraine policy, doing the right thing only after weeks or months of self-deterrence. But today, President Biden has an opportunity to change course. This week, he'll meet with America's closest allies and trading partners overseas. In the shadow of global challenges, he can start rallying our partners with real American leadership to help Ukraine defeat Russian aggression and to impose meaningful costs on Russia for its brutal war, to deter Iran's violence at home and abroad with new and effective international sanctions, and to meet Chinese manipulation and malign influence with resolve and with strength. I hope the President will seize the opportunity. Now, one final matter. Just in time for Police Week, Senate Democrats are moving to confirm an anti-police activist to the federal bench. Nancy Abadou is the President's nominee to the 11th Circuit. Her record falls far, far outside the mainstream. Let's begin with the nominee's tenure as Director of Strategic Litigation at the Southern Poverty Law Center. Half a century ago, the SPLC focused its attention on fighting actual, actual white supremacy. Today, it's better known for labeling political opponents as hate groups. Here's how left-wing commentary summed up the so-called hate map a few years ago, quote, the whole thing is a willful deception designed to scare older liberals into writing checks. The whole thing is a willful deception designed to scare older liberals into writing checks. Over the years, Ms. Abadou has been happy to join in on the fear monger. She described prohibitions on convicted felons voting as practically the same system as during slavery. She said her biggest concern about voter suppression with states passing law requiring voters to have a photo ID. She claimed that the state of Alabama, which boasted the nation's second highest turnout among black voters in 2018, was trying to establish white supremacy. And one of her employer's latest bits of legal jeopardy occurred on Ms. Abadou's watch in her area of professional responsibility. Several SPLC lawyers are under investigation by a panel of federal judges in Alabama for judge shopping a case. In other words, these activists filed and refiled their litigation in the hopes of getting a sympathetic judge. Conveniently, Ms. Abadou has claimed that even as director of strategic litigation, she was not involved in directing this particular litigative strategy. Nevertheless, the nominees' affiliations speak for themselves. We're talking about a former state leader of the National Lawyers Guild, a group that claims, quote, policing is the tr true threat to our collective safety. Policing is the true threat to our collective safety. And as a senior leader at SPLC, which recently defended a staff attorney after he was charged with domestic terrorism for participating in a violent attack on a police training facility near Atlanta. So, Mr. President, disregard for the rule of law should be immediately disqualifying for anyone seeking a lifetime appointment to the federal bench. After a year and a half of considerations, I hope our colleagues will recognize that this nominee is unfit for judicial service and reject her nomination. 